Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of Maximum Octane. And joining me today is a dear friend and colleague, Mr. Jimmy Lee. He is the product evangelist for Kukui. And just flat out, will say, I am Kukui when he's speaking about it. So, Jimmy, you have 15 years or more give or take smidge, we'll, we'll, we'll have take some liberties in sales and business development for software as a service, financial services, as well as hardware products. And you pretty much embody the fabric of the independent automotive industry, which is very important because that's what we're about here, right? And you are a family man, seven, seven children, <laughs> seven children, a new granddaughter, a new wife, Yes. Pretty exciting. You got a lot going on. Life is good. My life is in maximum octane. (laughs) It sure is. And I have had the pleasure of being on different panels with you and uh, different events, seeing each other at different events. We, we won't, we'll, we'll, we won't talk about the one in uh, Minnesota, but uh, that'll be for another (laughs) podcast, a whole entirely different podcast, but we'll always have Minnesota, right? We'll always have Minnesota. That's our spot. So your crazy amount of energy, would you count that towards maybe that traveling you do, the triathlons, the road biking, the camping, like you are on 100% of the time. I I don't know anybody quite like you that is just constantly like, "Ah, I'm here. Uh, Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting. I, I think it is a choice as well. I I think happiness is a choice. I think when you decide that you're going to be happy, that's a choice. When you decide to be upset, that's a choice. When you decide to be uh, offended, that's a choice. Um, And I choose to be happy. I choose to look at the cup as half half full. I I choose happiness over despair, disdain. I choose happiness over worrying about things I have no control over. So that goes a long way into my mindset. You sure do do that. There isn't anybody that would ever describe you as less than 100% positive and always on and energetic and all of that too. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, thank you. I appreciate the invitation. This is, this will be fun. Yes, it sure will be. So (laughs) you are going to speak to us about reviews today and the importance about them. You want to start off with that? Yeah, I I do, because reviews are such a powerful tool. It's something that we really haven't given a lot of attention to. Um, We love reviews, and as shop owners, we love reviews, but I I also know, and and don't lie to me, I know that you hate reviews as well. (laughs) It's true. You love them, them. Your rhythmics are playing in my head with what I lied to you song, so go ahead. Those of you that know me know that like songs play in my head all day. So thank you for that one. I haven't heard that song in my head in a while. <laughs> as soon as people will understand that we're all just minor characters in Kim Hickey's musical, it would go a lot better. <laughs> I think so. I think so. That, that, you know, I think maybe there should be some kind of a PSA about that, but that, that might be, that yeah. might be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So Google, um, they changed the rules. They changed the rules again. Uh, they're constantly going in and, and uh, massaging and zhuzhing and changing, and, and they never announce what's changed. Uh, it just happens, and then we have to figure it out and reverse engineer it. So one of the things that Google has done quite recently is change their algorithm when it comes to the star's ratings. So a shop that's a 5.0 star rating, like they are perfect, they they don't have any mistakes. There's no four, three, two, one stars. Which is impossible. But go ahead. Right? Um, I have seen it. I have seen it. And, and, and I think the reason that Google has done this, because they won't come out and say why, but I think that they think it's fake, like a lot of people in the world. They think it's fake. They think you have incentivized all of your clients to leave you a five-star review only, a five-star only review. And and so Google has gone in and said, all right, well, because we're human, because we make mistakes, uh, and especially us in the automotive industry, we are human. We do make mistakes. The difference is we own it and we fix it and we make it right. So I I tell, can I give names? 
specifics? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I, I was working with Nanette Griffin, Griffin Muffler and Brake in uh, Madison, and she had 49 five-star reviews. Madison is a small town, small community. 49 five-star reviews, and, and she was loving it because, oh, yeah, it's all perfect and everything. Um, but then the algorithms changed. And so she, she finally actually did get a one-star review and it's a one-star that they earned uh, with badge of honor. They earned it. She put out her response and said, oh my gosh, you're right. We've changed our policy, our procedures. Thank you for this teaching opportunity. Please help us. Let us make it right for you. They made it right. The, the client came back in and they made it right. And as she was leaving, the client says, uh, you know, I'm going to go in and change my one star review to a five star. You guys are absolutely the best. You are amazing. I love bringing my car here. You have a new customer for life. And then that says, oh, well, hold on. Um, thank you very much. Don't change it to a five star, though. If you could just keep it at a one star, because now I'm a 4.9 star rating uh, on my Google reviews. So I, I'm not that 5.0. I'm a 4.9. Just go in and go ahead and reply to my response and tell people how we made it right. So if you go and look at Nanette Griffin, uh, Griffin Muffler and Brake, that is the specific story. That is a huge change and, and they own it. So Google came in and said, you need a, a variety of stars. You need the variety of stars that come into your shop. And this is important for you because it shows the human side of who we are and what we're doing uh, because we make mistakes and we've got to own it. So, and, and that takes us right into the reason why I think Google might be doing this is, is gating. So uh, there's a couple of things that shops need to not do. So here's your warnings. Don't incentivize people to leave you a review, meaning uh, don't give them a, a discount for leaving you a Google review. Don't give them free windshield wipers for leaving you a Google so review. T-shirts count. I've had people ask me, well, what if we just give them a free T-shirt? But a T-shirt is a gift and it is paying for a review in Google's eyes. So you cannot do that. Cannot. That is and and when you're calling and asking, please, I, I, I just, I sometimes when I listen to calls, They'll say, oh, gosh, if you're going to, you know, leave us anything less than a five star, you know, please don't blah, blah, blah. <laughs> call us instead. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. My God. Yeah. No T-shirts. What about nope. Kikui beads? Can you offer Kikui beads for <laughs> reviews? No, no, you cannot incentivize reviews, whether it's a pen uh, or I, I just want to tell you oh. how serious I want to tell you how serious it is. You know that Jimmy's telling the truth because he gives out those beads everywhere on every occasion. If you're having a baby, he will give you cooey coo beads. If you're getting married, he'll give them to you for the wedding party. He will give them to you for anything. So if he's saying you can't give away cooey beads in exchange for a Google review, you better believe it, brother. That is the truth. That's the truth. You can't do it. So here's another one. I'll hold a raffle. You leave me a review. Everybody that leaves a review in the month of March or April, we're going to hold a raffle and give away a brand new Xbox or a PlayStation. Nope. Don't do that. Can't do that either. You can't incentivize them to leave your review, which is bad. The other thing that you'll see uh, is gating. Uh, gating can you explain is a, that? Yeah, that um, gating is a process where you send to a client or a customer and say, uh, how did we do on a scale of one to 10? Would you leave us a review one to 10? So anything that's like an eight or above, they would get a link to the Google review and anything that's eight or lower, they get a Google form that they fill out. And, and it says essentially, what did we do wrong? How can we make it right? Uh, and that form goes to the service advisor or the manager or the owner and you work to make a right. And the idea there is in a gating scenario, you're only putting out the five-star reviews and you are putting a gate there that blocks the Google reviews and gives them into a form if they want to do otherwise. So that, and that's gating. So here's, here's the, the, uh, just the, the brunt of it all, if you will, it affects the shop owner and the shop. It does not affect the companies that are out there selling this software that does this. So don't do it. Don't, don't do it. If you're going to open yourself up to reviews, you need to be open to all the good, the bad, and the ugly and, and, and own it. 
and do your best, do your darndest to be all uh, customer serviced up and, and making sure that customer has a good experience. And if you do make a mistake, there's ways about going um, to make sure that you make it right. Google definitely frowns upon any kind of screening of the reviews yeah. and the experience. So yeah, thou shalt not. It's almost a commandment, thou shalt not. In <laughs> fact, Kim, um, seven, 50, according to uh, the, the reports that are run and these companies that are smarter than me, so I, I do a little R&D, I rip off and duplicate, which is what you shop owners are doing right now as well. You, 50 to 75% of your effort should go into getting Google reviews versus your other reviews. So flip that around. 25 to 50 percent of your time should be spent getting Facebook reviews or website reviews or reviews on other sites. Something might be hot in your market or your neighborhood, like next door might be good. Um, if that's hot in your neighborhood, then work on getting it, but not as much as Google. Google is the godfather of the internet. And if you're going to play the game, you got to kiss the ring, know the rules so that you're playing it right. Absolutely. And if you get blacklisted from Google because they perceive you as doing something to get the reviews or to prevent bad reviews from coming, it is next to impossible to get that removed. And just think about whether it's a day, a week, a month, a year that it would take you to resolve that besides trying to call an 800 number that nobody answers and communicate online, when somebody searches for you, they will not find you. You will be like poof gone. And so you don't want that, even if it's only for a week or whatever, a couple of days, you don't want the headache. You don't want the aggravation. And for those of you, and I know a good chunk of you that listen to this um, have been in Facebook jail. So look at what it took to get out of Facebook jail. Jimmy, you, you, you're- <laughs> I got a warning that said I was bullying somebody and they gave me a warning. So I, I still have a copy of that. Yeah. I, it was odd. It was the strangest thing. Yeah. They pick up weird algorithms and it, there is not any rhyme or reason to what they do. So just don't even go into that gray area with them. And um, as, as Jimmy can attest with the Facebook jail and, and the warnings and all, it's a pain in the neck and it's usually for something silly. And it's usually not something even that you did, but they have the power to do whatever they want to. And so if you can think of Google as like the IRS today, I mean, they're like the IRS. They can seize your house, your money or whatever, because of whatever reason or whoever depends on the agent that's looking at the algorithms at the, on, on the day. And so don't, this is not an area that you want to mess around with. with yeah, that being and, said. and that's true. And, and to the point that you're making here, Kim, if you don't exist digitally, you don't exist. I travel all over the country. I'm in the Kikui van. I'm in rental cars. I'm, I'm going to visit shops, visit customers, clients, prospects. I'm going to visit every shops all over the place. And I can't tell you, Kim, how many times on a Main Street, Main Street, USA, Main Street, any town, USA, there are boarded up shops. And I venture to say... And, I don't know all the circumstances, but I venture to say there's a lot of those on Main Street that are closed because they did not exist digitally. I, I would agree with that. When you look at the stats of different reasons why they're closing up and, you know, there's unfortunately a lot of people in the industry that still have their head in the sand and they don't want to be digital. They don't want to go digital with even inspections or anything else. And you can not exist in today's world. And so it is forcing them out of business. Obviously we have other things like labor issues and parts issues and COVID and people not saving money to be prepared to weather the storm. But yeah. a good chunk of the people that are, are dying on the vine, so to speak, is because they refused to become part of the internet, you know, to have an SEO presence. They, they wanted to rely on what they did for 30 years and their parents did for 30 years before them. And that is not the world that we live in today, right? Right. Right. Uh, it, it's interesting. There's shops that I'm going to, shops that are at, very, very successful, um, specifically coming to mind, um, Brian Gossel. He's behind, he's at the end of a cul-de-sac behind 
two roads off the main road and a railroad between that. So he's definitely what I would call a destination shop. You, you really got to go to find him, by the way, yeah, you're, you're not just five by. shops. Yeah. You pass five shops going in to his shop, which is at the very end of the cul-de-sac. Then I think of Vinnie Lucido. Um, he is between a railroad and a river in this one street that goes all the way back at dead ends in a park. And you pass three or four shops coming to his shop, but his shop is absolutely cranking off the, off the chain doing extremely well because he exists digitally. I, I think of this shop I went to yesterday, TLS Auto here in Atlanta, Georgia, right by the railroad. It just cuts them off. There's all these apartment complexes and then boom, this, it used to be a Mazda parts store. I'm, I'm going to put a whole write up on Facebook. It used to be a Mazda parts store and they are renting out part of it for their shop. They have part as the office and part as their, their lifts. Uh, it's just amazing. If you exist digitally, it goes a long way towards your credibility and Google's confidence and the currency that you can have with Google for them to recommend you. And that's important. It, okay. it absolutely, absolutely is. Kelly and Lee Weatherby, you know, they're yes. another one. They're another one. They're off the main road. Their show is uh, their shop, their show, their shop is like behind in a dead end. I mean, it's just crazy in Mesa. I mean, it's just, you know, so yeah. if, if well, their shop for was the longest time, they had a gravel driveway. I think that mm -hmm. they've asphalted it now, but they, they were behind a main big strip mall. Um, and you're right. It's one of those little jetty, little, small, little streets. And, and they're back behind that. Um, great shop as well. Love going. To oh yeah. Lee. Accurate automotive. Yeah. They're fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned about the percentage that they should be spending on, on Google. So I, I notice a lot of businesses and shop owners will spend time with getting reviews from their, for their website or through another company that it goes to that company's, you know, and they, they number one, or they have a thousand reviews on Acme critic you know, dot coms, which is yeah, all yeah. well and good, but, and it's great to have those nice little quotes on your web page and Facebook and all of that, but that doesn't do anything for your Google rankings. And I don't think that people understand. So, so yeah. there isn't any exposure that's bad for you, but when you're spending so much time and money working on your marketing, you, you want to put that time where you're going to get that return on investment and, and the Google is King and it's the IRS. I mean, it just, it is. And so like them, hate them, whatever, it doesn't matter. And so I, I really wish everybody would start looking at those other places where reviews are being posted and being hosted. And yes, can somebody stumble upon them? Great, but it's not doing anything for their rankings. You want to expand yeah. on that a little bit yeah because if you're putting the energy effort energy and, and and into getting reviews well then let's collect the right kind of reviews so it's sending emails every email should have two buttons one button being leave us a review the second button being schedule an appointment online request an appointment so every email should have those two buttons uh with your uh, you're sending a text a day after two days after three days after prepare that in your exit interview before you hand them their keys back. Hey, I'm going to send you a text message here in two or three days. Leave your story. Tell the next raving fan, tell the next person what your experience was so that they know what their experience can be as well. You know, Tom Grady, uh, Red Hawk, Otto yeah. and Temecula. I think it's Temecula that they're in. That's where they live anyway, in okay. California somewhere. But they started out with, I think they had, they were in business 20 years or something crazy and had like 20 reviews. And they started sending a text nice. after the, the next day, after a customer was in and the, the service advisors in their kiss goodbye would say, you're going to receive a text tomorrow. And there'll be a link in there. If you're happy when you get home and with what we did here today, please feel free to leave us a review and so on. And so they started sending it out to every single person. They have 700 and something like 4.8, 4.8 reviews. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look it up while you talk because oh. it's, but they, you know, yeah. I watched that from on the ground, you know, day one, 
Oh, and they were so excited. Oh my God. When they got to 50, they even had a big cake when they hit a hundred reviews because it was so incredible, you know, that they start doing this. And now the compound effect, it just, it goes. It does. It really does. And there's precision auto Renee. um, She had 4,400 plus plus reviews on her website. And that was her focus was getting all the reviews to go to her website thinking, okay, well, the Google bots, they come and they crawl the site and they crawl the site. Okay, Renee, but how about if we put these reviews onto Google's review platform? She only had six Google reviews at the time. Wow. Went, went from six to 185 in six months, added another hundred in the next three months, 285. And, and they're well over 400. Now, they, they, that is where your attention needs to be is getting the reviews into Google. Positive, negative. You need them into Google because that story. And here's, here's the interesting thing. Prepare that in the exit interview. Prepare that, as you say, in the, the kiss goodbye, so that they're going to tell their story. What you're hoping that they put in there is you're making model and services performed. So you can kind of prepare them for that. You know, in your review, tell them about your car and the, the services we performed on your vehicle so that the next customer can know. And what you're doing here is leaving keywords on the Google review platform. So when ne- somebody next re- does a search for uh, BMW expert, Riverside, California, your shop is going to come up. Right. Cause they're index. They become indexable and for um, searchable. Right. So yes. let's talk about the mayor crazy town for a minute. Cause I know that that's. <laughs> <laughs> they're out there. <laughs> they're going to get you. Right. So you've got positive and negative reviews coming into your shop. And we all know that we love the positive ones and we despise the negative ones because we have to respond to them. And and this is where we love and hate reviews. Okay. So respond to all positive reviews. And and in that review, you want to say, uh, thanks. Thank you very much for your trust in us. Don't thank them for their business. Do we understand why? Right, Kim? Yes. We don't say thank you for the business because that's saying, oh, thank you for your money. Okay, so we're not going to say that. Thank you for your trust in us in taking care of you and keeping you safe on the road. We're here for you when you need us. Positive, easy, quick, simple, and easy. Now, if a customer has not put in a lot of detail, they just say five-star review. Uh, Jimmy Super Shop, these guys are great. Sure love them. Can't wait to take my car back again sometime. You can leave in your response the keywords. Hey, thanks, Kim. We love working on your, what do you drive, Kim? A 2020 Yukon Denali. 2020 Yukon Denali. We love working on your car. Glad you brought it in for the oil service and the trans flush and the coolant flush or, or whatever it is that they and did on the they car. they would tell you they love my crystal steering wheel cover as well. Oh, my word. I love it. So, yeah. And, and, and then what you're now doing because the client didn't leave that in their the keywords in their positive review, you're able to leave it in your response. The customer's response has a little bit more value Google-wise than yours, but heaven forbid, if you just say thank you, I mean, there, you just missed an opportunity. Let's drop some keywords in there. Now, it's important not to just drop keywords, but to speak human. So the Google <laughs> algorithm knows when you're stuffing it like a Christmas stocking, you've got to really pay attention and make sure that you're speaking human, leaving that positive review. Okay. Now to negative and the mayor of crazy town, they're out there. They're looking for you. They're trolling for you. They've never been to your shop. They're absolutely crazy. And everybody knows that everybody can smell that. They're like, Oh my gosh, this person is just absolutely crazy. They're nuts. It does bring you down because they left you a one-star review. So it does affect your Google algorithm. The way to respond to that is to definitely say, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't know who you are. You're not in my system. I don't have your vehicle in my system. Uh, give me a call. Let's see if, what we can do to make this right. Take the conversation offline. Absolutely. Yes. I see so many people start going back and forth. And, you know, if somebody is a cyber bully or clearly, you know, has nothing else in their life to do, they, they will be relentless and you will be doing that for days. And I have had many uh, clients say, 
holy cow, somebody left us a horrific review. I responded to them and I I'm getting more people coming in this week because of how I responded to that horrific review. And everyone came in and said, oh my gosh, the way you handled that was fantastic. We're so impressed with you. So, you know, take the hit. If it's, if it's your fault, you know, fess up like Jimmy said and, and say it. If right. it is somebody that's not, I had one the other day, like I saw, and they were leaving a, a review for a restaurant, they thought. And so they just very nicely said, gee, we don't serve hamburgers here, but you know, whatever. And, you know, but they love, and they made like a joke out of it. And they said, we love a great bacon cheeseburger. And I'm sorry, they left the bacon off of yours. I'd be upset too. And they said, but what we can take care of is you and your family's, you know, needs and keep you safe on the road. Right. And so they took that and turn it into a positive, right? And then yeah. people came in because of that, because there was humor in the review, you know, the reply and all of that. Not you idiot, this is a not a restaurant and so on and so forth. Right, yeah, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. There's always a marketing spin that you can put on these things. And, and that's a beautiful one. I, I love hearing that. That's very cool. That's fantastic, very cool. fantastic. So, so don't engage with the mayor crazy town. Don't engage with the mayor of Crazy Town. And if you did earn that badge of honor, do like Nanette did. Go in and, and fix it and do everything you possibly can to fix it with the client. Um, but, but then also don't have them change it to a five-star if you can get them to reply to your response. Because what do we do as humans? We go in and we want to see all the one stars first. How do they treat the special cases? How do they treat those opportunities where there's a mistake made? Am I going to be belittled? Am I going to be berated in front of the online community? Or is this a shop that's going to say, hey, I'm sorry you feel that way. We're going to make it right. Bring your car down because we, we will give you the shirt off our back. And Kukui beads. And Kukui beads, not to incentivize the reviews, but what we're doing <laughs> is we're going to make it right. We're going to make it right. That is our number one that we always do. Um, and there are some people that you just will never be able to make right. Um, and there's a little bit of 86 marketing you might have to do on, on that particular client. And that's okay. I'm glad you mentioned about that. Most people look at the one stars first. They, they sort it yeah. by the lowest rating and go because I did not used to well, like when whatever reviews, when I started paying attention to them on, on things and I would look at the overall yeah. And oh, okay, if they were a 4.8 or whatever it was, and I, I would say, oh, okay, they must be pretty good. They have a whatever. And then my son said, like, there was something I was going to buy the one day. And I don't know, they had a 4.5 rating out of a thousand something people. And my son's like, what are you doing? Don't buy that. And I'm like, the reviews are good. He's like, did you read how they handled? And I was like, what are you talking about? And so he sorted it and he's like, look at how every time when someone needed something, how poor the customer service was. He said, you don't want to deal with that company. And I'm like, hmm. So, good you point. know, all the good ones just happened to not have anything go wrong. Right. And so they didn't have that experience. So had I not yeah. read that, um, I wouldn't know that that's how they treat their customers. Right. It, right. When something happens. Well, and, and so the suggestion for you, Kim, especially going forward too. number one, check the negative reviews to see how they deal with it. But then number two, sort it by the most recent they could have new management in there and they haven't had negative reviews for the last two or three years. Yep. So, so that, that, that negative review from five years ago about how they treated customers, they've had two management changes. They've had another owner change since then. It, it could be a completely different experience sorting it numerically or, or alphabetically or most recent. So you get to see how they're training customers today. And yeah, the negative how did they treat people in the past? Perfect, perfect. And then real quick, if you would, I know you had yeah. some little tips for removing a Google review. Do you want to share those? Yes, yes. This, this is our uh, three phases of removing a Google review. And, and this is very difficult, by the way. It, you've got a 50-50 chance on each phase of this I don't even think it's process. 50 So You're being cup half full today. I don't even think it's 50-50. <laughs> it is 50-50. Okay, so here's number one. And um, 
Okay, so here's number one, and and this has two two ways of doing it. Number one is to report the review as inappropriate, and you want to get two or three other people to also report it as inappropriate. That's number one. So the second half of that is it takes two to three people for it to get Google's attention. Um, if you have ten or twelve people that are marketing inappropriate, then it gets even more attention, and it becomes more of a thing, and, and people really look at it. All right, number two. Uh, on this other half of this is when you log into your Google business profile, you want to flag it as inappropriate. That has the same effect as two to three people marking it as inappropriate. But there again, still you want more people, 10 to 12. Awesome. Okay. So is this where we can offer t-shirts and kikui beads if they go on there and flag this? No, <laughs> no, no, you can't. And, and here's another thing too. You want it from people that aren't all at your shop. Have it from people that have left you reviews in the past, your raving fans. When you go to church, you have the choir and everybody marks it inappropriate. Or you go to the ball field because uh, your son's in baseball or the, the Boy Scout troop or the Girl Scout troop. Where is it that you've got people that have been to your shop before, they know and trust you, and they can go in and mark it as inappropriate as well? Make sure you know, check it. Make sure that... If it's all family, that's marketing is appropriate. Google knows that and they will catch you and they'll. So if everybody has the last name Lee, we can't make a comment about don't make fun of Jimmy's Kikui beads. Correct. Okay. Because that, that it, it, the, the algorithm would see that and, and that wouldn't have the effect that you're going for. All right. So that's phase one is marketing as inappropriate. You got a 50, 50 chance. If there is nothing, if there's no content on that one-star review, I'm going to give you a 99% chance. It's not going to be removed. There's nothing there for Google to look at that says to dispute. To dispute. Yeah. That says this is the mayor of crazy town, or this person is reviewing a restaurant. This is clearly an automotive shop. Okay. We're going to take it down. So the, if it has no content, very difficult. We'll, and we'll go through the entire process so that that one star probably is going to stick with you, but at least we're going to try the, the, the methods that have been outlined. All right. So phase two, you've got to start a timeline. So phase two, three days after you have marked it as inappropriate, you go to the Google business profile forum which is support.google.com. And that's where you're going, uh, going to put your case. And that case goes to a forum. That forum vets the information before it actually goes to Google. So you want to give just enough information to get a case and a case number so that then when you have a person that you're talking to and not just a, a humongous forum, because this is an open forum, somebody could take what you're trying to do and go from the opposite side. And okay, but we're not going to talk about that. Well, what you want to do is bring it in, give enough to get a case. And then when you have a case number, then you give them the total information of this customer's never been in my shop. I don't have a, a John Smith that goes from Jennifer, and Jacob and Joshua, but no John. Um, I, this vehicle has never been into my shop. I, I don't know who this is there's a chance that John Smith is acting on behalf of his mother, Marjorie Smith. And Marjorie happens to be a client of yours, but you don't know that. But also you're checking the vehicle and you can show that the vehicle's not there. So how are you documenting this to put it to the case? Screenshots, take screenshots of your point of sale system, customers alphabetically. You can show screenshots to show that you just don't have a John Smith. Um, but you've got to wait that three-day time period. If you don't wait the three days, you're going to get an email that says, wait three days, and at the end of three days, then you submit your information to the Google Business Profile Forum. All right, so now you've submitted it. It goes to review, and you've got a 50-50 chance again that they're either going to remove it or they're not. Uh, if they remove it, hallelujah, good, on to the next. There's a chance that they don't. In the event that they don't, now you're on to phase three. And phase three is to go after the profile of the person who's leaving the review. Click on their name and see where are they leaving reviews and look at all of their reviews. If this is an, an absolute troll and all they do is give negative reviews to automotive shops, 
and they're doing all over your city, then you report that profile as inappropriate and Google will look into what they're doing and then they'll take that down. So there's, there's currently not an algorithm that is uh, keeping an eye on the profiles of people and where they're reviewing or where they're leaving reviews, positive or negative, they don't take action on it until somebody reports it as bad. So if, um, if the profile is taken down, then all of their reviews that they've left ever, all of them are taken down, not just for your shop, but for everybody else as well. So that could be that. That's a good thing as well. There again, you've got a 50-50 chance that the profile is going to be the one that is taken down. So th those are the three phases there to go through. Well, fantastic. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. And I, I think, you know, Google is something that people need to pay much more attention to, especially the reviews, acquiring them, making sure you're putting your efforts in the right places that you have a good ROI. And so I'm going to volunteer something that you don't know. One, I know that you volunteer to uh, give out the, a, a list of five things to do with your reviews that we could provide if anybody emails me and all of Jimmy's and Kakui's. Uh, contact information, of course, will be in the comments if you read it in the show story, as well as my contact information. So email me if you would like Jimmy's list of things to do. But Jimmy, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And um, since we're on Zoom, they can't see you, but I can. And tell everybody that the first 20 people that email me will get a set of Kikui beads either dropped off or mailed to them. Is oh, that, I love it. I love that it. Okay? Let's do it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. First 20 people will give them a set of beads. That'll be and awesome. And then Jimmy is literally all over the country. And if you have never had the chance to meet Jimmy, he is just, just a wonderful, wonderful human. One of, one of my favorite humans. And just, if you need some positivity and some sunshine for a few minutes. So if you are interested in, in having Jimmy to stop by in the van when he's on the road, send me, send me a list of where you're at and uh, we could see if Jimmy could put on his Kikui tours and it could be in six months from now. It could be in a year from now. It could be tomorrow, depending where he is. So if you're in Atlanta, act quick because that's where I believe he is this week. But uh, other than that, so Jimmy, any closing words for our uh, listeners? Yes, you guys are all awesome. I love the automotive industry. My name is Jimmy Lee. I am Kakui. I am here to enlighten you. As the rules change, Kim, as Google comes out and changes these rules, because they do, they change them all the time. We'll come back again and we'll enlighten the world, the automotive industry, the maximum octane. We'll enlighten everyone so that you can, whether you're a Kakui clan or not, it doesn't matter. You can go in and use this information. What I'm sharing with you now is for all shops all across the United States. Fantastic. And while we're speaking about the importance of reviews, it's really important for to subscribe, rate, and review to Maximum Octane if you have not. And feel free to share it with a friend when you hear content that you love. So thank you for listening in. I will be back next week. And everybody stay safe, make good choices, and stay inspired. Bye. Bye.